welcome back to my channel. My name is Nana and this is day 29 of my book of Weed and we'll be talking about haunted libraries around the world. Let's my make up. My first one is Piola Public Library, Piola, USA. The Piola Public Library didn't stand a chance of not being haunted as its first three directors all died under mysterious circumstances, one of being hit by a streetcar dropping dead in the middle of a meeting or were committed by arsenic, the deaths of these directors doomed the library to rumors of curses and hauntings. The story goes that the original owner of the library's land, Mary Stevenson Gray, cursed the property in 1847 after the death of her nephew. Even though the original building has been demolished and replaced, the curse is so strong that the ghosts of those ill-fated directors continue to haunt the Illinois library to this day. My next one is Kimberly Africana Library, Kimberly, South Africa. Apparently, aesthetic is the weapon of choice of library directors who later come back to haunt as the first librarian of the Africana Library drank to poison after he was found to be a doctor in his accounts. Visitors to the historic building have reported seeing the restless spirits pacing the halls, tinkling teacups and dropping books at odd hours. Number 3. The Grange Library at the Art Gallery of Toronto, Toronto, Canada. The Grange is a manual in downtown Toronto that is almost as old as the city itself. Being the 12th oldest surviving building in Ontario City means that the history of the garage all but guarantees a good ghost sighting or two. And indeed, there have been many such reportings over the years, with the most common one telling of a gentleman and a yellow velvet coat walking through wall halls when doors would have stood many years ago. The, su the suggestion is that this man is the original butler of the Grange, who retired after 50 years of service by leaving a note stating, left knee or Grange at 1 o'clock p.m. to be a wanderer. Perhaps he didn't actually leave to wander at all. Number four is the Morelia Public Library, Michoacan, Mexico. The Mariela Public Library is known for its rich history, stately beauty, and creepy ghosts. Dating back to the 17th century, the building was first known as the Temple of the Company of Jesus and was turned into a library in 1930. That didn't keep away those who wanted to keep company with Jesus, though, as for years, library visitors have reported a nun dressed in blue paralyzing them momentarily with a ghostly presence. Number 5. Member Scales Mansion Library, Lockerbie, Scotland The library of the historic Member Scales Mansion is said to be haunted by its builder, James Munsey. Though Scottish by birth, Munsey enlisted in the Russian Navy in the early 18th century, but eventually fled home due to the political unrest in Russia, and his fear that his colonists would desert Peter III with Lewis in his life. Even after holding up in the safety of his mansion, he never lost his fear and died a paranoid man in 1773. Since his death, Munsey Ghost is said to haunt the entire home with the preference of roaming the library. Number 6. The State Library of Victoria, Melbourne, Australia. Dating back to 1854, there is no surprise that Melbourne State Library has more than a few resident ghosts. The art section of the library is reportedly home to the ghost of a former librarian named Grace. Said to be a benevolent elderly spirit, she continues to keep an eye on the place and make sure that a more confronting spectra who roams the southern end of the closed art stack stays in his place. The music room is frequented by a naturally addressed mustachioed ghost who is known to leave music box out of place after he is finished Pursuing them. Number seven, Carmen Van Med at the Library, Shortosphere, England. Perhaps the most famous haunted library of all is the one located in Carmen Van Med Abbey. Not necessarily famous for big scares or eerie origins, but because a fairy telling, fairy telling photograph exists from days long before Photoshop. Taken in 1891, the picture shows a faint but recognizable male figure sitting in the left hand chair. The extra spooky part is that the second Lord Combat Man had been struck by one of the one of London's first model cams just a few days earlier, and his burial was taking place at the very moment that Lady Symbol Corbett took the photograph. Four years later, paranormal researcher Sir William Barrett 
decided to look into the case by locking all the doors and setting up his camera in the library. When the photograph developed, he was astonished to find that same finger looking shockingly like the departed Lord Cumber Mayor sitting in the chair. That's creepy. My next one is Marsh Library Island. Located in Ireland's capital city of Dublin, Marsh Library has been open for more than 300 years. It opened in 1707, the library is the oldest free public library. Born and raised in Glen Marsh into the clergy in the early 1660s. Then in 1679, Marsh was sent to Trinity College, the College Dublin to the Provost, and from the 1680s to early 1700s, he continued to rise in the ranks within the church. Marsh had the idea for his library while he was provost at Trinity College. At one point, his niece Grace Marsh, who helped with his housekeeping, ran away and eloped. She allegedly left a notebook for her uncle in the library book, and he sought in the library still searching for it. My next one is Thurberg Hall, England. Thurberg Hall in Norfolk, England is one of the places taken care of by the United Kingdom's National Trust. The Trust is a charity organization that dates back to 1895. They say it's Europe's largest conversation charity, caring for historic properties and areas of beautiful countryside for everyone forever. In the late 1960s, Phil Green Hall was passed on the Trust by Robert Winham Kenton Clemberg. There was a fire at a friend's library in 1809, and William Winham tried to save books from that fire. By this time, Wynham had already inherited Philburg Hall. He ultimately died from the injuries he sustained. Legend says that his ghost appears at Philburg Hall in order to keep reading books. What a smart man. <laughs> I want to be that kind of ghost later on in life. My next one is Hutchinson Hunch Public Library, USA. At Hutchinson Public Library in Hutchinson, Kansas, the ghost of Ada Day Hollands of Phil has been seen. She worked at the library from 1916 to 1926, and again from 1946 to 1953. It was in 1953 that she left the Hutchinson Library, Public Library, not to work as a librarian in California. Not long ago, after, however, she died in a car accident. My next one is National Library of India, India. The National Library of India is a permanent repository of all reading and printed materials produced in India, or written by foreign or whatever published and in whatever language. Located in Kolkata and beginnings go back to the early 1800s and the Calcutta Public Library. Different ghosts have made their presence known in the library over the years. There is a secret chamber was discovered in 2010, which no one has entered in more than 200 years. There are different theories about what may be inside. So, secret Harry Potter, secret chamber, tomb portal. Anyways, those are the, all the haunted libraries around the world. Let me know which one is your favorite. Mine's probably the India and Mexico. Just, I just really like the side of it. So, um, I like the story behind it. And yeah. But yeah, I do want to meet that ghost in the afterlife where I just continue to read books. That's a nice ghost we have there. But otherwise, please like, comment, subscribe, so you'll be notified every time I post, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!